Good evening, and welcome back to the Shadows of Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes Weekly Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition Livestream Campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running our game as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Wilhelm Wolfsbane, the human swashbuckler rogue. And we're joined today by our good friends. Jill the Nidus, playing Rudy Whitaker, the shifter eldritch knight. And Joel Gorman, playing Wrath, the Asimar warlock. Thank you for joining us once again. If you are just tuning in for the first time, th welcome! We are the Dungeon Dudes, and Kelly and I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday on our YouTube channel where we cover everything D&D. &D. And tonight, for those of you that are watching live, just a heads up that there is a rather heavy thunderstorm that has hit the area. So if you are watching with us live on Twitch, and all of a sudden the live stream stops... <laughs> Uh, blame Zeus. <laughs> um, and so, uh, with, uh, with all that, uh, but, uh, otherwise you can check out our video content on YouTube at youtube.com slash dungeon dudes. You can also join us on Tuesday nights when we record the campaign live on Twitch. You can check us out from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube or check us out as a podcast as well on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. Note that uh, we will not be playing for the next few Tuesdays. This is our last episode before we take our summer break and get ready to come back in person in the basement. We are very excited. I have been testing new cameras for our new battle cam setup. Uh, we have been testing out some new gear and some new microphones. Thanks to the incredible generosity of both our Kickstarter backers and our patrons. Uh, we have thought it was a good time that as we come back, why not upgrade the live stream setup? So we're very excited to be sharing that with you when we do come back in a few weeks. Um, tentatively we will be back august 17th um so we'll be taking a couple weeks off so that we that we can you know spend some time with family go to the cottage have a break recuperate after this crazy crazy kickstarter uh which speaking of which we have a kickstarter that is live right now through to the end uh, of uh july it ends uh at uh 12 a.m on july 31st which is basically midnight of july 30th uh, so you can check that out at Drakenheim.com because we have built a book based on season one of the Dungeons of Drakenheim live play campaign. Uh, if you watched season one and were inspired by it and thought, I would love to run my friends through this crazy dark fantasy world and scare the pants off them with Eldritch Horror, um, well, you can uh, very soon. Um, our Dungeons of Drakenheim book has everything that you need to run a complete campaign for level 1 to 13 set in the city of Drakenheim based on the events of our first campaign where your player characters will be the ones who decide which factions to work with, which monsters to overcome, which adventure sites to explore, and ultimately what to do about Delirium and the city of Drakenheim itself. They will get to embark on their own personal quests through the ruins of Drakenheim, trying to find out, you know, whatever uh anything from what happened to a lost loved ones to perhaps even wanting to assassinate one of the faction leaders or perhaps even prove their own claim to the throne ah get to that in a, in a little bit so uh be sure to check this out uh there we have done so we're so blown away by how this has gone so far um we have uh over 8,000 backers contributing uh, over $800,000 US, which is just mind blowing. We passed uh, wow. with the with the currency exchange rate, we passed a million dollars Canadian, which so that was kind of a big deal for us this past weekend. So we, we just our, wow. our our minds are totally blown and we are filled with uh, an incredible amount of gratitude uh, for this amazing community uh, coming out to uh, support this work and jump into this world. We're so excited to share it with you. So check it out at drakenheim.com. But with that, let us delve back into the shadows of Drakenheim. Drakenheim is no more. For 15 years, we foolishly believed the madness and mayhem of that crumbling city was confined to the ruins. We were wrong. Insidious horrors have crept out of the shadow of Drakenheim into a world unprepared for such nightmares. 
tales of strange magic, swirling haze, and unspeakable terrors echo through the villages and towns surrounding that accursed place. Now, the Dusk Wardens, a new band of heroes, are tasked with driving out the seeping tendrils of the spreading darkness before it takes root. Welcome back to the Shadows of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, they were trapped in the midst of the night in Kesselholm Keep, perhaps the soon-to-be prey of the Countess Constance von Kleinkessel. However, our heroes made a, a daring escape, encountering all manner of mutants and delirium caches in the dungeons beneath the Kesselholm Keep. There, they also rescued Elias Drexel, the lieutenant commander of the Hooded Lanterns, and beat a hasty escape with the, some help from Petra and Ansem of the Lanterns, where now our group is hanging out in the forests of, uh, Kessel, of the Kesselwald, um, waiting out the rest of the night for, as Elias Drexel had almost succumbed to, to delirium contamination. There, however, as Drexel recovers from the harrowing experience that he has just gone through, a ghost of his own past haunts him as Wilhelm confronted Elias Drexel about their shared past. The two men discussing in front of the glowing embers and the hot stew being brewed to tend to the weakened Elias Drexel um, commiserated over their shared history with one another. For indeed, Elias Drexel turns to Wilhelm and recognizes him as not Wilhelm Wolfsbane, but Wilhelm von Kessel. And as he says, as the lieutenant commander says, you have every right to take my blood, to take my life. I ask no forgiveness for what I have done, and I expect no mercy from you. I only ask that you consider before you take my life that you take my service for i would swear to you as the rightful king of westamar are we in are we is, yeah. yeah okay yeah. all right <clears throat> Elias, you you swear to me as the king of Westamar. You are what you are. You've survived. I've regretted what I did that day for years. And I feel every day like I paid the price for the decisions I made then. If there's a chance by my life or my death, I can make this right. Then I would take it. I pull out my blade and I hold it just under Elias's chin, pointed right at his throat. He does not flinch. Tell me, Elias, did you swear to my father? Did you swear an oath to him? To protect him? To stand up for him? To believe in him? Manfred von Kessel, you swore to him. You were his friend. You weren't just his friend. You were like family to us. Do you remember? I do. And here you stand before me in some attempt to make me trust you because you're going to swear to me. What good is your word, Elias? Do you remember the look on my father's face when you stabbed him through? Because I do. 
It's burned into my head. What about my mother? You were a family friend. I remember her pleading. Elias, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? These images burned into my head of your betrayal, and now you're going to sit there and and swear to to uphold some sort of honor for my family? What honor do you have? What honor can you offer me? What what truth would I find in your words? The only truth that I can offer you is the truth that you're here, you are alive, and you have survived, and you are the heir to the throne. And that is your right by blood. Elias. And I... You, you fight for a throne that's broken, that's corrupted, that's contaminated. A throne in a desolate wasteland. You've... How many hooded lanterns have died trying to reclaim this throne of yours, this kingdom of Westamar. Drakenheim? Drakenheim is no more. There is nothing left but a crater and terrors beyond our wildest dreams in that place. I have seen nightmares and I I do not even want to know what worse nightmares lurk in that city and you are trying to send people in there to reclaim some shattered kingdom. What, what throne am I heir to? What kingdom am I heir to? A kingdom of, of rivaling, squabbling ancestors and, and, and fighting factions over, over a, a piece of rubble contaminated and ruined, turning people that we love into monsters? What, what throne have I inherited? The throne that you've inherited is the throne that you can build. I don't know what you've done these past few years. I don't know what brought you to Kesselholm. Maybe you wanted to find me. Maybe you wanted to get revenge. Maybe you wanted to take back your home. Whatever it was, I don't know what brought you here. It sounds like you know a lot about what's gone on in the state of the world. And you agree. I can hear it in your voice. It's wrong. It's wrong. It doesn't matter that that city is destroyed. It doesn't matter that the throne is broken. What matters is what we're going to do about it. And there's something in you, Wilhelm. If you didn't think that you could do anything about it, Somehow, I don't believe you'd be here. I, mean, I don't believe we'd have, be having this conversation. Elias, I came here to kill you. F for years. How long was it? Eight, nine years now? I thought of it every day. Your face... killed my father, you killed my mother. Me and my sisters, we, we tried to flee. There were guards, my older sister. She stopped. She stayed behind so that me and the two younger ones could escape. And then there was you on the drawbridge or on the bridge. I told them to keep running and I faced you. I remember the way you looked at me. The way you looked at me on that bridge, like I was an enemy, like I was somebody that you were ready to murder, and you were. And only only years before that, when my father first handed me a sword and told me that I was going to be trained in the in the in in being a swordsman. Do you remember? Do you remember stopping by giving me pointers? I was I was frustrated and, and stressed. I couldn't handle the blade very well, but you you kneeled down and you put your hand on my shoulder and you 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 fixed my stance. You told me how to handle a blade. I remembered you as that until that moment on the bridge when you were somebody else. 
And why? Because my father didn't want to send more people into Drakenheim? Listen, Wilhelm. I told you. I have nothing to say for myself but my own regret. That mistake, what I did, I did because I thought it was the right thing for Westamar, and I was wrong. Your father, rest his soul. Your father and I didn't see eye to eye on everything. I respected him. I loved him. But I couldn't... All those people whose lives were lost in Drakenheim, all that blood we spent before the war trying to take it back, and all the blood we've spent since, I have to believe that those people gave their lives for something. And when your father wanted to abandon Drakenheim, when he wanted to abandon everything that I thought we thought were fighting for, that was when your aunt wrote to me. She said she would return to the city. She said that she would negotiate. And... But that your father had to be removed. I thought she was right. And how was I supposed to know? that she herself was going to die only days later. Don't, don't try to justify the actions. You, you chalk it up to a mistake, a, a, an error in judgment. Your mistake, Elias, you're a letter from my aunt and a stubborn fool who Your thought- Your father, and his sister, your aunt, were at war with each other. We were fighting a war. And you had you chosen your side. I had. And I didn't believe in that side anymore. Your father was going to abandon this nation. He was going to let it disintegrate into nothingness. If you think that this kingdom should disintegrate into nothing, if you think that this throne doesn't have meaning, if you think that your bloodline is meaningless, I, I, I guess. If you think all those lives that were spent, more than just your, your own, I don't, I can't justify what I did. It wasn't the right choice, not for how turned out, and not for how I did it. Maybe I could have convinced your father to return to the ruins. Maybe I could have convinced him to take up arms again and reclaim the city. Reclaim what we should have had. But... Elias. It's, you've always been a stubborn man. My father didn't want to abandon the throne. He wanted to move it. He wanted... He wanted to claim a new capital to Westamar. Let Drakenheim crumble because it is still crumbling. Claim a new throne. Start new. Start fresh. The Von Kessels could have thrived. We could have continued to rule the kingdom. You and I both know that's not what would have happened. I don't know that. We don't know because we never got the possibility to see because you murdered them all. Look what happened in Illyria. In Illyria, that royal line fell. 
the seals of Illyria were lost. Those seals are the only thing that was stopping the... the Illyria is controlled by the church now because they didn't have a strong line. And if we didn't don't have a strong line, if we don't have a throne, if we don't have a throne backed up by the seals of Westamar, we'll get picked apart. Whether it's the other dukes, whether it's the Caspians, whether it's the Amethyst Academy. Elias, we've we already need the power of Dracula. Apart. We have already fallen. Exactly. There's it is already happening. Are you going to let it get worse? Because if you're just going to stand by and ignore your birthright, let this get worse, let the kingdom fall apart, let the whole thing fall into ruins, then fine. I'm done. So that's it, Elias. You swear to me as the new king of Westamar. You, you face your ghost and... What, because I don't want to go marching back into Drakenheim and fight for a crumbling th throne? You're, you're done again? That's it? That's all you've got? You betrayed my family. You set in motion what would cause all of this to crumble. We could have moved the kingdom. We could have kept the Von Kessel bloodline. And you made sure to end it. And you left me, a kid, running and scared hiding in the woods. And now here I am. And what, you want to go put me on a throne again? And, and, and what, that's going to fix everything? That's going to make Westamar all better? We have bigger issues, Elias. And my duty right now is not to the throne of Westamar. It's to the world. It's to helping as many people as I can. There, there are problems deep-seated problems that are stemming from drakenheim and i can't be bothered to worry about my name or my bloodline until we figure out what the hell we're doing with delirium there are bigger problems at stake right now and they are stemming from this 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 corrupted city that you call home Wilhelm, what are you talking about? Did you come here to kill me, or did you come here for some reason about delirium? What brought you here? What are you doing? You're talking about saving the world. You're talking about... <sighs> big things. Disasters. I don't know what you mean. Look at the, yes, the world is falling apart, but <sighs> I'm very confused. You... But all I can say to you, say for that is you decide what you want to do. If you want to kill me, then I deserve it. I'm not going to argue with you. What I have done, my actions, I deserve to die for that. And if you want me to die at the end of your blade right now, then fine. But I will die. I will give my life if it means rebuilding this kingdom. And if I can give my life in the service of that, if that can be my penance, that's all I ask. Elias, I am an honorable man, as I was raised to be by my father. I came here on a mission that didn't involve you, but you happened to be here. And I've been waiting for years for the chance occurrence that I would run into you again. And I plan to best you in combat, one-on-one, -on -one in a sword duel where I bested you and took you down. You are far too weak. I can't end you sitting here eating your soup by a fire. That's 
Not what my father raised me. Rule number 54. Show forgiveness. Especially at times when it is hardest to do so. I put my blade back in my sheath. Elias. I don't trust you. I can't. I believe that you feel the weight of your mistakes. Maybe letting you live and dwell on them and letting me be a constant reminder of your mistakes. Maybe that's good enough. And I don't... um, We don't need to call them mistakes. They're crimes. I did... What I did was a crime against you, your father, this kingdom, and my honor. I'm ashamed of it, but I'm not going to hide from the truth of what I did. Well, then what do we do now? Do you want to save these people? Do you want to do something about what's happened to the state, this world, this, this, our nation, our world is in? Elias, you don't know the half of what I've been through. I don't. And I'll listen. You can tell me if you want. You don't have to. But whatever you want from me, I'll do it. Elias, you you took my family. And you were part of that family. I trusted you. You, You were like an uncle to me. And you took it all away. I am. Um, I'm sorry that you thought it had to come to that. I am too. But I did what I did. I can't change what I did. I can pay the price, and I can make penance where I can. If you want me to pay the price in blood, that I'll pay the price in blood. Say the word. I won't fight you, Wilhelm. I'm not fighting you. I don't even deserve that chance. That you would even consider dueling me. (sighs) The honor that you have is beyond compare. That you would even give me that chance. Because I don't deserve that. I'm not going to kill you, Elias. I think I... I think I just wanted to hear somebody say that they were sorry for what happened to me. For what it's worth. For what little it is worth. I am sorry. I can't promise you that I know the first thing about what to do with this name. I've hid it away. You're the only person right now who knows. Your friends don't know? No. I I figured, um, with the state of the world, um, it was, it was best. proof? Elias, I have nothing. I, 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 you kicked me off a bridge after stabbing me in the face. I didn't come back. I didn't. I don't have anything. I, I just. It's fine. Fled. I. I'm nobody. I'm nothing. We have the phylacteries. In the crypts of the cathedral in Drakenheim. 
Surely they were destroyed. They survived. They were recovered. Really? Yes. We have your uncle's will. We don't have... Your uncle and your cousin, Leonard, are both dead. Um... So is your Aunt Lenore, I think, at this stage. She's been transformed into a monster. Oh, God. We don't know what happened to Katerina and Eliza. The Cecilia, her children died during the war. What about your sisters? I assume... I mean, you can tell me... I assume my older sister died. She stayed in the castle to fend you off while I escaped. I doubt she made it out. Uh, she... Cecilia sent the Steel Fangs to help me. The plan was just to kill you and your father and let your mother and your sisters live, but... The Steel Fangs saw to it that that wasn't going to happen. My two youngest sisters, I just told them to run on that bridge when I faced you. I, I told them to run and I stayed. I don't know. I never heard from them again. I like to believe that they changed their names and are somewhere out there, but... So they could be. I, I couldn't tell you. Well, that means the number of Von Kessels is slowly growing. Then, perhaps, look at Do you remember Eris Jackson? Of course I remember Eris. Apparently, her... She had a son. I've, um, George. You've heard about this? Yeah, that one... That one's... It's been, it's been a long... A few months of hearing things. Uh, so yeah, Eris and Leonard. Leonard, my cousin. He was also a very dear friend. Yes. They had, they had a son. George, the Caspians hid him for fourteen years. He was born after the city was destroyed. Mm. We haven't read your, your uncle's will yet. And when I found out that George was alive, I, well, we've had a lot of support from the Caspians, but there's some problems now that you're here. I don't want to make more problems. I, I'm just trying to help people. Well, then that's what you're going to have to decide. It's been a long day. If you want to press your claim, there's... You have a strong claim, Wilhelm. A very strong claim, even with George. And a lot of your father's old allies have not helped us in defending against the Illyrians. If you made a claim, we, they might, they might. Elias, it has been a long day, and I started this day thinking I was going to uh, get revenge, and now I'm ending the day contemplating whether or not I am a king of Westamar. I think for the time being, um, I have two favors to ask. Mm. You owe me at least that. Favor number one. 
I think I'm going to tell my two friends the truth. But I don't think we should spread word yet until it is appropriate to do so. All right. Number two, I don't think we should worry about any of this until after we've reclaimed Castle Home. That is what I came here to do. But we need to have a long conversation, and my friends should be involved as well. As Very to the, well. the Hooded Lanterns need to stop selling delirium. For I have many stories to tell you about why. Very well. We'll talk about it in the morning. Have a good sleep, Your Majesty. Just Wilhelm for now, please. Very well. I'm going to turn and leave. All right. Moving over to Rudy and Wrath. Outside the, uh, uh, sh after quite a while, Wilhelm emerges. What, uh, he looks distressed. Rudy, Wrath, how do you react to seeing him come out? Wilhelm looks l pretty awful as he comes out. Like, just like he's an emotional wreck. I uh, rush up to him and I say, what did he say to you? What what did he do? It, Wilhelm, what's, what's wrong? I think Wilhelm at this moment, he, he is no longer strong in this moment. He is no longer holding it in. And he actually, Rudy, you are pretty much the mother figure to Wilhelm. He collapses into your arms and starts sobbing. Oh. And I rub his back. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm a bit taller. Yeah, like, I guess you, I, 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 I'm just like. Oh. I guess you bring him back into the uh, the tiny hut. Yeah. Unzip <laughs> the tent. I'm like, yeah. Come on in, come on in. I can, I can kick his butt later if it helps. I don't know what he said, but you. I'm going to sit down. Tell us what's going on. And I'm just like stroking your hair. <laughs> Joe, what does Wrath make of the situation? I, I'm going to put a, you know, Wrath is going to put a hand on, on Wilhelm's shoulder. And just, you hear it, just a soft voice in your mind. It will be okay. And there's a, and you can feel Bruce rubbing up against you in the most loving way. The first time and he's not trying to eat you so you know it's like a big deal that's like he's not trying to bite you or anything just the classic cat rub thank you both um was I he need... a vampire <laughs> no are no. you under, under some sort of spell no, no um what did he say to you i need to tell you both something Rudy, I think you're probably going to have a, an idea of this. Um, when we were in the lighthouse and we had those tables where you put the books down and the image of the book appeared and I threw my journal down yeah. and you seemed like you had a moment of familiarity to the image that popped up. What was familiar about it to you? Well, I, I noticed, listen, I, I know, you know, I don't pry into your life. I, I was going to ask you about it, but the crests in the background, I noticed it wasn't just some run of the mill manner that you were in. There was some, uh, some familiarity in, about them. In fact, what you realize is that you were standing in that hallway in that image only a few hours ago. The hallway. 
The Crest, Castle Home, my home. You guys, I need you to keep this secret. I'm Wilhelm von Kessel. I'm I'm Manfred's son. I'm the only one I know who got away from the massacre of the von Kessel family. I am supposedly I have claim to Westmar. A claim that I don't know what to do with. I don't know if I want it. I, um, when I fled, the, the pain of losing my family made me reassess my life. I decided that I was best put into the service of helping others to try to, to stop wars and horrors from befalling other people the way that they befell me. And I mean, I hid out in Tierhaven for years and got comfortable. Nobody came looking for me there. Kind of let it drift away. And then when we were asked to join the Dusk Wardens, it seemed like an appropriate calling for somebody who wanted to, to help people. I knew that I was taking a risk going back out into the world. The further I went from Tierhaven, the more likely it was that someone would recognize me and I thought Elias Drexel would be the most likely person to recognize me but I also when I left this tiny hut earlier I went in there with the intention to kill Elias Drexel and I will be honest about that as well but I I couldn't do it um, it wasn't honorable it wasn't right Every rule in my book goes against seeking vengeance, but I just was so angry. I was so angry and so sad. But looking at him, I still don't trust him, but I believe him. He, uh, he told me to take his life. He said he deserved it. And in that moment, I, I couldn't. I know this is a lot. I'm sorry for dumping this all on you. I just, I didn't want to tell you sooner because I was worried that if my name was out, it would put us in danger. But I don't think it can be contained any longer. And I think it's important that you two know. I, I am. am. I'm already close to you, but I go up to you and I grab you by both your shoulders and I say, it was your family that was killed here. Yes. And I just, I wrap my arms around you in like the tightest mama bear hug you've ever had. And I say, I'm so sorry for what has happened to you. I, Thank you. I understand why, why you would keep this. But I'd, I wish you told me sooner so I could have been there I didn't know how Rudy I I didn't want to complicate things you took me in you found me in your barn and you said come have breakfast and you started putting me to work around the house putting me to work around the town and I just sank into it I, I didn't want to complicate things I didn't want to confuse things I didn't want I didn't want the weight of my name to affect a simple life. And instead you kept that weight on your own shoulders. I can only imagine how you've been feeling all these years. I hope you feel like some of that weight is lifted now. I do. Well, huh? Do you want me to kill him? No, Raph, it's, it's okay. I'll do it. 
thank you, Raph, thank you. Um, just let you know, me know. You know, Raph, in a, in a weird way, that's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. <laughs> that is very nice, Raph. Very it's, awful. I, I, I have had my difficulties with my family, but if anyone tried to hurt them, they would suffer. And it's just if you're too close, I could come up behind him as one of his children and stab him in the neck and no one would ever know. <laughs> and he's quite weakened from the, the vampireness, so it would be quite easy. In fact, I could, I could do it right now. <laughs> Although I understand you're, you're a good man, Wilhelm. And you have something that I cannot comprehend. <laughs> but I think it is exactly why you must seize this power. This power in your hands could do magnificent work. We could... do not choose to be good or evil. We choose to be powerful. And with the power you could do great things. Westamar is in a very fragile state right now, Wrath, and I think I'd be most comfortable if us three, and I mean, we're going to have to keep our eyes on Elias. I, I don't, again, I, I don't trust him. Me neither. But you didn't trust that other person too and we killed him very easily i just i i'm i'm still i'm still just kind of lost with the lias represents a representative for the hooded lanterns mm -hmm. the hooded lanterns is someone whose support we might want elias said he would swear to me as the true king of westamar i don't want to start using my name instantly for this sort of Pull, but if we can keep the Hooded Lanterns on our side with my name, then that's beneficial. Um, Gets messy when you start messing with those kind of politics. And that's, I'm, I didn't, my family wasn't around long enough to teach me everything about politics. There was supposed to be, I mean, originally my older sister was going to take the, the throne of Kessel home, but uh, I, I, I guess it's me. And with well with with there being no other von Kessels, I guess that doesn't just put me as the next in line for Kesselholm that depending on the legitimacy of this uh George depending on the legitimacy of the marriage, the the child, when the will was written, it gets very messy. There's a lot of ifs mm. here, but it puts me in line for the throne of Westamar, and uh, apparently that's in Drakenheim, which I have no interest in going to, or I, I don't really want to hang what out in the castle. What kind of city would that be uh, ruling over? Uh, not a good one, I think. And, I mean, Wilhelm, I understand this is important, and I, I feel honored that you would tell us, and of, of course we're not going to tell anyone else, but how does this affect what we're here to do? Drakenheim is one one spot of this, We've already found out that the world is being affected in none, none too many years by delirium. Won't matter if you're ruling over some wrecked city. It's going to be the wrecked world that we got to worry about. I agree. And Elias seems to really want me to take up my name. And so for the sake of the Hooded Lanterns, I've, I've asked Elias. Um, he owes me a few favors, I believe. Uh... I've asked him to keep it secret for now, and I say the three of us keep it secret, but with Elias on our side, that means the Hooded Lanterns may be on our side. The plan stays the same. I 
we'll need to sort this out as time goes. But for now, now that you know the truth, it's probably more apparent how important it is to me that we reclaim Kesselholm. We need to drive out the Klein Kessels. There is a monster that sits on that throne. Your throne. My home. My home is infested with monsters, and we need to take care of that. Before we start figuring out how we're going to get the Countess out of here, I'll, I'll say one thing. I swore an oath that I would never follow anyone into a war that I didn't believe in again after the Civil War. But Wilhelm, you have my axes if you need them. Rudy, wherever I go, you're, you're, I need you there. You're my greatest advisor. You're, you're my leader. You're, you've given me room to grow, but you've always been there to have my back. Hmm. I won't make I... any choices without conferring with you first. And Wrath, you're here too. <laughs> Wilhelm, I really like the sound of counsel to the King of Westmar. Mage of the court. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds really nice. I mean, I will need somebody who knows um, something about magic. Tradition sure that wants to be Wrath. Traditionally, Traditionally, one of the archmages of the Amethyst Academy is appointed to serve as the court wizard of the King of Westmar, of the monarch. Oh, hopefully Archmage my... of the King of Westmar. I really do need somebody who knows a lot about magic, so maybe I'll ask River. <laughs> And we laugh together. I'm going to kill him. I'm just going to go kill him. And I start walking towards the... No, no, no. no. Wrath, come back. I pick Wrath up under his arms and I put him back down. Uh, maybe a bad I'll time kill him. for... I'll kill him. Bad time for a joke, Wrath. Bad time. I, I, you know, Wrath, I appreciate having you around. You are an oddly loyal friend when you're not superseded by your cat bruce likes you well good for now good bruce looks at you and looks at you in the eyes uh, um uh wrath and says in your mind if he bleeds be sure to preserve the blood the royal blood is a potent alchemical reagent we will need it yes his blood <laughs> sorry <clears throat> we must kill a vampire. Yes. Blood, yes. Mm, that's high on our to-do list. Hmm. Well, how well, do we kill a vampire? <laughs> it's a good question. Do you guys want to take your long rest now uh, uh, and pass the night? Or yeah. do you want to discuss a few any other matters? No, that's I, I think Wilhelm's sleepy. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty. Okay. Um, do any of you get a good night's sleep? Roll me a d6. No! <laughs> oh, no. Four. Hey, I roll a six. Three. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, Wilhelm, you surprisingly sleep exceptionally well. You know, maybe it was because I let all that weight out that I just, like, I had the best sleep I've had in years because I, I felt like that weight was gone. Mm-hmm. The morning, um, in the morning, the tiny hut's magic falters and fades, and you awaken to the smell of the hooded lanterns um, frying up a rasher of bacon over a campfire, uh, and one of the hooded lanterns is re returning from the woods with um, a couple of squirrels and a rabbit. 
I love me some squirrel chunks. <laughs> Do you now? Um, and so they're they're preparing a, a breakfast. There's the they draw some water from the nearby well. Uh, the who uh, you know the the cottage that you're staying in is abandoned, but you know it, it still is serviceable. The the farmland overgrown. Uh, there is a yard where they've hitched some of the horses that they have, uh, and um, the the Lord Commander is uh, sorry the the Lieutenant Commander Elias is still um, is still asleep when when you wake up, um, and they uh, and uh, Petra smiles warmly as the group of you rouse uh, and offers you some of their coffee. Uh, it's black coffee, just straight up uh in in the uh made in a in a tin can basically um and the there there's they've got some some nuts and berries and some preserves for the from the trail as well um and one of the hooded lanterns um comes back into camp um and says i went into town the silver fangs are all over They're, uh, they're not at the they're, lodge anymore? No, the, there's a bunch of steel fangs in town. At least, it's like a full patrol. It's like they're they're patrolling the, the, the town normally. Looks like they're, something's stirred them up, but they're, they've got people posted at, at all the entrances to the roads leading into town. And uh, a few of the steel fangs are, are watching by the moose and squirrel as well. Like all it took was a couple of troublemakers to get them up and doing their jobs. Are the steel fangs, or sorry, is it steel or silver? Steel. I misspoke. <laughs> okay. Are the steel fangs, they, they work for the countess, but we are we assuming that they are working, do they know they're working for a vampire? Ant Ansem speaks up. The the Steel Fangs are professional mercenaries. They'll do their job and they won't ask questions. They're uh, they're operating out of the lodge in the woods, correct? Yeah. So the that... the Von Kessels used to have a lodge out there that they took hunting and everything. And I guess the the Countess doesn't care for it, probably because there's not a lot of places to hide from sunlight out there. So. <laughs> she gave it to them well if a bunch of them are on patrol in town perhaps their leader is still at the lodge which means that we might have an opening to go there with less problems and maybe try to outbid the mercenaries negotiate a little negotiate. bit negotiate we might have to figure out a way to act on our own the uh, apologies but the the commander's a bit of a mess, still. I don't think he's... I think it's going to be a couple days before he recovers from the contamination. He, he seemed really upset about something as well. He was really... Checked in on him a few times, and he didn't really say anything to me. I hope he's okay. He'll be okay. I... We had a long talk. Um, it was a hard night for him. A lot went down, and... Mm. He, he has some tough memories of this place, I think, that he's working through. Um, the three what of us... He... Petra says, what did he want to talk to you about? Oh, he was in a box in the Countess's lair and uh, he was chained up and he was being sucked dry by a vampire. It was probably quite taxing on his soul. But why did... Sorry, I guess it's not for us to ask, but why did he... What did you talk to him about? Did you do anything to him? Uh, no, um, I'm from around these parts, and so him being locked in the castle with the vampires, he had questions for me about what I might know of the situation. Oh. Oh. Make a deception check. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> not a good deceiver. Can... Can oh, I help? Oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> can I help Wilhelm because I'm kind of like playing up the lie? Um, uh, what you're gonna have to make um, a really good excuse right now to help him. Um, 
We jammed him with a large syringe, aqua expergo. He was asking about some of the side effects, which he is obviously experiencing. Hmm. All right, you can both you can both roll it. I got a five. Twelve. <laughs> Are you lucky? Uh, you know, I'm 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 not even going to pull a luck point on this. Petra and Ansem give a visible look at each other like they smell the BS um, but they nod it off it was a very long night uh, I don't think any of us have any right to tell you what Elias wanted to talk to me about it seemed rather private and uh, I would leave that up to him all right it's not like he's going to kill him. I hope not. What if the three of us went instead? What if with Elias recovering, the three of us could go to the lodge as a smaller envoy? Um, I, I know I'm not quite the part, but I wear a green cloak. Um, I... I can speak on behalf of us as a as a company to um, recruit the Steel Fangs against the Countess. Uh, perhaps not marching upon them in force would be beneficial. We don't want to lead them back here either. If the Countess has decided that we're enemies and she's ordered the Steel Fangs to bring us in we're vulnerable here it's going to be two or three days before the lord command before the lieutenant commander is back to full strength so until then he's vulnerable we're going to need to keep our own people posted here while he recuperates it's really important if we but it's also probable that they're going to be looking for us if we don't do something quickly they're going to find us here then I, I think it is for the best that uh, we keep low profiles. We're going to have to move through the woods, but I, I do think there are there are two there are two uh, leads that I would like to follow. Number one is the steel fangs. I do want to get an idea of what their allegiance is and whether or not they can be persuaded to change that allegiance. Number two, there's an old crypt of the Von Dragons. And we still have the mystery. We still have several mysteries that we're trying to solve. And there were maps in the castle leading to that crypt. I feel like in the days that are coming, while Elias Drexel rests and while we get the Hooded Lanterns prepared for a battle against the Countess, we... um. The three of us might be best suited to do what we always do, which is investigate. And we could investigate the steel fangs and investigate the crypt and see what we might be able to uncover. Uh, Petra turns to Rudy and Wrath. Do you agree or do you think that maybe we should just go for the throat and just try to attack the Countess directly while we have the opportunity to do so? I would agree, Petra this countess this creature is vulnerable during the day she has sent these steel fangs in a last ditch effort to attempt to find us or get us and the more we wait about the longer the better the chance they have of catching us and and killing elias us the hooded lanterns we cut the head off the snake the steel fangs will look for their new leader which will be us I agree I don't I don't think we have a lot of time to investigate but I'm worried that if we don't go talk to the steel fangs soon then we're gonna be fighting them and the vampires and Petra and Ansem you said that you needed uh, soldiers you needed a force and you came here expecting the help of the steel fangs How, do you think that there is a way that we can parlay with them 
Well, if they find if the Steel Fangs find themselves unemployed. But Elias is in no condition to ride into battle. No, but they're not in the employment of of us. The Steel Fangs are being employed by the Countess. Yes. She's been paying their bills. So Petra says it's a little bit shady, but you know, if there's no employer that's going to pay them, they're probably not going to stick around. We also take back the castle. We control the funds that the Countess uses to pay out the Steel Fangs, and we suddenly have a reservoir to keep them employed. Mm. Their Could loyalty we... is to the dollar, not to her. Yeah. If we kill any of them, though, it might be hard to convince them to work for us then. Exactly. That's the only problem, is oh. that if we... If, if it... There's a good chance... Uh, Ansem interjects and says, there's a really good chance that if the Countess has posted the Steel Fangs into the village, that she might have called some of them back to the castle as well. So this is the risk. This is what we need to decide, is if we go straight for the Countess, we'll probably have to fight through Steel Fangs, possibly losing their allegiance. If we go to the Lodge, we might be able to talk the Steel Fangs down, and if we can persuade them to switch their support... But that might be harder than just killing their employer. So the, that's the give and take that we're at right now, is either we go for the throat, and by going for the throat, we're going to have to be very careful, because we want the steel fangs on our side. Or we try to negotiate with the steel fangs. What if we go to the lodge and the steel fangs attack us on site? Well, then... I guess that choice is made for us. Steel fangs, <laughs> and then we go kill the Countess, I guess. Or, again, cutting the head off from the snake, the Steel Fangs have a leader, this uh, Rickard, I believe. Again, cutting the head off of the snake, if we go to the lodge and they put up a fight, and we just... Maybe, maybe they'll answer to... I don't know, that's risky. I mean, they might answer to the biggest, baddest wolf there. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, what what time is it during the day right now? Uh, it's the morning. You guys are still eating breakfast. How about this? Let's go do a, as always, stealthy mission. Let's check out them steel fangs. If we decide that it's worth it, We'll go for it. If not, we'll come right back here and we'll go take the Countess on. But I think we need more information about what's going on at this lodge before we can make any decisions about what's the best way forward. Hmm. I vote to kill the Countess. She is weak and vulnerable, especially during the day. What do you say, Wilhelm? Right now, I mean, half the Hooded Lanterns are resting. Elias is sick. What are we storming the castle with? And how are we going to avoid ki uh, killing uh, Steel Fangs? Or are you saying just the three of us, another another great sneak into the castle? It went so well last time. What do you know of these... Uh, my limited knowledge of vampires is... And from what we killed, the... The creature, um, the, the Chamberlain, it was through the sun. We saw the opening, a small but viable opening above the Countess's resting place. If we can expose that in a more meaningful way, we know where she sleeps. We have discovered her right true now. resting place. Mm. So you're saying go for a more subtle mission with us. More subtle indeed. Uh, Hooded Lanterns, do we have any explosives? We got something. 
but it's back at the inn. Damn. <laughs> we brought some extra the cart that we had back at the moose and squirrel has a crate of delirium in it and some delirium forged weapons from the academy that we were going to use as a burning tool there's a there's a thing that the academy mages gave to us called a bottled comet hmm. it's a little bomb made with delirium Ooh. sounds so, mighty nasty there were a few of them there uh, a couple delirium tipped arrows and yeah yeah there were there were some things there and a couple uh, doses of of aqua delirium Oh, okay, so this this was something that we probably should have been bringing into the conversation earlier, Petra and Ansem. Uh, new plan. I mean, new addition to the plan. There might be an option here that involves trying to uh, disguise ourselves and uh, sneak in and get away with that cart. I mean, what if we uh, get one of the steel fangs while they're patrolling? Wrath, you can turn into one, and then we can send you in to pick up some of these bottled comets or whatever else is uh, useful Fantastic. under the guise of one of these steel fangs, and then we'll go sneak into the castle and kill the countess. We have other... There's others amongst us that are still there. There's other hood lanterns that still might be staying at the inn. The steel fangs could have done something to them. They could have figured it out. They could have been going through that already. <sighs> So now we have a rescue mission as well. All right. So I guess it we, comes back need... to getting steel fangs on our side before we do this. The steel fangs might not know yet. They might be looking for you, not us. Hmm. We might still have the element of surprise if we strike now. It is urban. I believe that these steel fangs, like most mercenaries, owe allegiance to this countess for the money alone. If Without we can avoid them and steal this weaponry, Blowing up the Countess cuts off their supply. There is also quite a bit of delirium in that well. I saw it when I found the ledger. She has a an enormous supply of delirium. Yeah, we've been selling her delirium for like four years. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna <laughs> stop. Where that's a back burner thing. We're gonna address that later. Right. So. So sneak in to the moose and squirrel. Get the bombs. Go kill the countess with the bombs. Then get steel fangs on our side without killing as many steel fangs as possible. But of course, you know, protecting ourselves. We show we the steel it. fangs the true nature of this countess, that she was indeed a monster and a vampire. And although she paid her price, we can pay the same. We're assuming they don't know and don't or don't care. Mm -hmm. And and if we do have to come up against some steel fangs, Wrath, do you have a... um? I assume you can change your spells so that they are stun spells and not tear a hole through a person's spells, right? Probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Incapacitate them is what you're saying. You can... Can you shoot someone not in the head? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's quite easy. You just aim at a different body part and away you go. Okay, so what are the three of you going to do? 
the hood of the, regardless of what you what you decide Petra Ansem and the lanterns are going to stay here to protect Elias Drexel in case any of the patrols of the steel fangs do come into this area um and they they note that if if you come back to the cottage and the hooded lanterns aren't here they will try to contact you at midnight or no sorry at noon each day at the shrine of chromac hmm. that makes okay. sense okay okay so if by if by any chance we lose contact with each other one of us whoever sur one of us if there's hopefully all of us make it but if for some reason we have to flee i will send somebody at noon to be at the shrine of chromac that will tell us tell you our new location all right um there's a lot of pieces at play here and i don't know what the best options are um I, th I I originally thought that the lodge was going to prove the best option, but um, I don't know. We have we have a cart of supplies at the inn, mm -hmm. which sounds really appealing mm -hmm. and could really help with a assault. And Rath, you bring up a great point that if we kill the Countess, then the Steel Fangs aren't probably they're loyal to who's paying them not they're looking the for countess. a new job as long as the countess lives she controls them and mm. her orders are likely clear kill us and anyone who harbors us for what we had done last night she has revealed herself and we have escaped mm. with one of her pets mm. i am sure she is quite quite livid Rudy, what, what say you? I agree. I think we're at an advantage being the daytime. Um, I don't think we're going to have as much trouble from the vampires, but I think we need to keep that in mind that if we go into the darkness, it's no different than being nighttime. We need to possibly not only get the supplies, the Hooded Lantern supplies, we might need to incapacitate three of the steel fangs, maybe take their gear, and then we might be able to walk right into Castle Home Keep. Hmm. Although, you know, the problem is there that the steel fangs are a pretty small group of mercenaries. They probably know who they have in their ranks. So if we are sneaking around, we need to not be seen by other Steel Fangs, but only seen by the Countess's people who might not know all the Steel Fangs. Mm -hmm. It's going to be difficult. Or we just ignore that plan and go and blow a hole through the ground and... Yeah, that one? I like that one. <laughs> you know me, I go in full force. It yeah, I am a big fan of the explosive. This Comet thing sounds quite fascinating. I want to try it. <laughs> Yeah, when, the comet. <laughs> when have comets ever caused problems? Never. They usually miss. <laughs> All, right, All right, so so we need those supplies first. Um, are we planning on taking the whole cart or only what we need? I mean, I can be Big Rudy and I can grab the cart and go. How far? Fast. How far and, uh, is the town from the castle? Um. No more than an hour's journey. How much by flying? Just, just hypothetically. By, as as the crow fly flies, you could probably get there in twenty to thirty minutes. Right, like it's an hour because you kind of have to go across the bridges and up the hills. So, like if you could fly in a in a direct line, it would be much faster. Oh, and also that would also include the fact that you are probably having a flying speed so if you like if you're flying at a speed of 60 feet as opposed to the ground speed of 30 feet you could probably fly from the town to the castle in like 15 minutes interesting can interesting. you make a cart fly Raph? i can make a big rudy fly can big can big rudy fly with a cart on her back <laughs> 
the implications of Rudy, you're already so big. The implications of you being bigger. I mean, (laughs) I'm only big when I use magic, Wilhelm. I mean, I get called old. I get called big. I think you're taking it. Poor big old Rudy. I think you're taking it in the wrong way, Rudy. I mean, and and I'm gonna like grab your bicep and kind of give it a squeeze and be like, "You're an you're an axe wielding." It's true. I am strong. Yeah, I have big muscles. I get it. I forgive you. I meant big as a compliment. You, I've seen you chop people's heads off in one swing. That takes. There's a lot of strength required to do that. Okay. I understand. I'm just teasing. <laughs> these these steel fangs, I do not think they will expect us to show up in the town mm. uh, this quickly. If we Wilhelm move, surprise. If, if we Wilhelm surprise, get into the stable. We know where the cart is. We get the supplies needed or the cart um, entirely. And we explode out it, the roof. We get it to the Countess's castle. Um, and then we explode her roof. <laughs> Um, now, just, that all, just, now that all secrets are on the skylights, table. Skylights. Skylights. Um, we're making skylights. Well, I guess we need to find out where that... Uh, I was just going to ask, now that all the thing. secrets are out there, can I ask, like, does Wilhelm know approximately where above ground that grate should appear based on the uh, light of the castle and such? So you recall with the, with the castle, there are, there's the keep itself Mm -hmm. and then there is the east tower and the west tower that grate would have lined up with the west tower oh that doesn't help us with sunlight does it i thought it went up oh no it goes up into a tower tower so we blow up the tower uh i understand um that yeah, the, the, the West Tower being the tower that... So Wil- Wilhelm knows this because he grew up there, is the West Tower is where there is an attic, there is the um, the bath chambers, uh, there is a small drawing room there, and then there is a room in, the, in that tower um, that... Uh, traditionally was given was a room that was given to um, a court wizard. Oh, as Rath, well. we're blowing up your future room, right? Um, and so this might be the chambers of you. You recall the mention of a um, a Doctor Moore. Um, mm-hmm. So the the tower might be where Doctor Moore would have his his offices. And then, yeah, it, j- just guessing from the, the that layout, like it would, it it might have been below that tower. Uh, just for the sake of our plan, because our entire plan involves blowing up the floor and letting sunlight hit the casket. So I'm gonna ask: Are there adequate amount of windows on the bottom floor of that tower that no, would? No, al- there are no windows on the bottom floor of that tower. All right, so our whole plan. Yeah. Will the, the explosives the, blow through the side of the tower? It's possible they might. It is a fortified tower, um, so it is a tower that is meant to take like a, a shot from a siege weapon. But it's possible. But it's also possible that if you're blowing a hole in the base of the tower, depending on how powerful these bottled comets are, if they're anywhere approaching like siege level or artillery, they could bring the whole tower down. Um, one other question that I have is, is reflected sunlight off a mirror considered direct sunlight? Um, it might be. You can certainly try that. There is also another idea. Big Go ahead. Rudy could probably lift up a casket. We could do a, a fetch and grab. I still think that it would be beneficial to have the supplies. Uh, delirium tipped arrows might be useful. Uh, the bombs for escape routes or, you know, solving issues in general. Um, del- delirium forged weapons might be handy. Mm. Um, One thing. Mm. That was a very tiny hallway. It was a very tiny hallway. I don't think Big Rudy could get in there, grab the casket and get out unless we blew up that whole wall. 
I have another idea. If the sun is in its highest moment at noon, what if we create a hole from the top of the tower down to the casket? Oh. Through each floor. How do you propose we do that? I can make a door in one of the floors. I can make a window in one of the floors. It's through magic. And Rudy can do the third one. How many floors are there? How many floors can there be in a tower? Uh, Wilhelm can answer this. Uh, conceivably, there could be one, two, three, four, five, six to the roof. But what about if we use some sort of mirroring from a lower floor to refract the light down into the hole like you know like when kids take glass and they burn bugs mm -hmm. I mean my kids used to do it all the time they're cruel mm. <laughs> a series of a series of reflected this lights. plan is getting very convoluted and complicated and I worry about oh, our likelihood I to pull this off we excel I, at simple plants. How about we just burn the, the <laughs> smoker out, get her to come up, and then we deal with trying to get her outside as soon as we get her out of there. Why don't we just go and blow up the entire <laughs> room she's in? Perfect. I love it. Now you're thinking. And, and hope that that works. <laughs> I like the idea of carrying her to the sun. I think, I mean, it's morning now. We, we, we only have the day to go. So, I mean. <sighs> All right. Do we blow her up where she is? Do we take her out or? Realistically, we need to get her into sunlight. She's at the base of a tower that makes this much harder. I think. I I think the, the bigger question is, are you guys going to go to the town and try to get the supplies, or are you going to go directly for there first? Supplies. My vote's one, one. Then perhaps one step at a time. <laughs> All right. And when we come back from our break, you guys can try to do that first. <laughs> and then we can and... get the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Start the train. Okay, so for that, we will take our break. We'll be back in 20 minutes, and we will see you all in just a bit. <laughs> and we are back from our break. We have completed our short rest, uh, restored all of our hit points, restocked on consumables. We got action surge back. We got our key points back. You know, we used arcane recovery. We got channel divinity back again. We got, we got our warlock spell slots back again. I've got my luck you know, points back again. You only get those back on a low rest. <laughs> oh. You're going to be using them? I, I just don't use them. Alrighty. So, your plan in place to head into the village of Kesselholm, get to, to the stables at the Moose and Squirrel, and recover the explosives and delirium brought by the Hooded Lanterns. Okay. So. With that, you set off from from the small farmhouse uh, back towards uh, the village of Kesselholm. Now, the village of Kesselholm straddles um, the mouth of the Dran River, or like, sorry, the, not the mouth, the source of the Dran River. So it is here where Lake Dre drains into the Dran River. And so you are on the northern side of the river. Um, and so there is a bridge that stretches across the Dran that is one of the entrances into town. And then there's an entrance into town that comes along from the, um, from Drakenheim, basically. And then there's the other way into town that comes down from the castle. Um, there is, there are pathways that go down towards the lake as well, but those aren't really looked at as entrances into town. Uh, those are just that way that the townsfolk go to get down to the lake right um what you've heard from the hooded lanterns is that the steel fangs have posted soldiers at the bridge and at the main entrances into town and are patrolling throughout town uh and the moose and squirrel lies not uh lies 
just in the in the heart of the city, as a heart of a heart of town, off the uh, off the market squares. So you will have to kind of get in to get in. What's your what do you want to do? It is still the morning. Um, we're probably not going to be able to take the bridges or any of the main entrances. We may need to cross the Dran River ourselves, or... You are on the same side of the Dran River as as the rest of the town. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well then... Could we... Um, some trade carts, some caravans, some farmer you know, heading into town, could we, um, you know, pay them to stow away in the back of their wagon to sneak us in? Like, yeah, the back of a wagon or like, I know that this is unlikely, but an Assassin's Creed does this on purpose, but I'm like, in Assassin's Creed, there's like always that group of people that's walking and you just kind of go in the middle of them and hide. All right. Um, if, if you, if you want to head into the roads and try your luck at that, uh, we can certainly certainly see trying to find like a cart that's going towards town or yeah a group of people who are walking together that don't look like steel fangs sure uh which side of town do you want to kind of look out for the main the main roads leading into town um what what side of the town is the moose and squirrel on do we remember it's it's okay. more in it's pretty central okay okay yeah. Um. And Wrath, you don't have any magic that can help us get in on in a group, or I know you can change your appearance, but can I mean, you change all of our appearance? Here's the here's the deal. Here's what's happening. Here's here's the lowdown. Let's all just be invisible. And um, as we approach town. Um, I'm just gonna cast invisibility as a uh, fourth level spell, Woo! and I'm gonna make myself, Wilhelm, and Rudy uh, okay. invisible. Okay, so that will make everybody in the in the group invisible for an hour, for one hour. Okay, let's walk right in. Let's run to the moose and squirrel. <laughs> okay. Time sticking. You head in to ta- you, you you slip into town through one of the side streets. It's really hard to call them side streets because really it, this is a rural village. So the homes are very spaced out and there's lots of trees and dirt paths and occasionally the cobblestone path. But like this is not like a city where the houses are packed closely together. These are cottages that are spaced out erratically um, in small clusters um around like a well um or the chapel or a, a workshop or, or another business so you um you head through the dirt streets um and immediately the you can tell that the mood in town is a little bit different many of the people that are wandering about are on edge and you can see as you move into town uh, i'm gonna have all your roll me a d6 anyways six three, three. You know, just two things as you head into town. First of all, there's a farmer coming into town with a wagon. Oh, come on. And the steel fangs have stopped the farmer and are searching the wagon. Mm. They start stabbing it. I'm going to feel really good about my decision. <laughs> um, like, like they start stabbing the hay. <laughs> and as you move through town, there's a group of steel fangs that have a very you you notice a group of steel fangs there are three of them in in their uniforms the steel fangs are garbed um in they they wear this very deep crimson um sort of tunic with um boiled leather plates um often uh they don't wear helmets many of them are totally unshaven um uh or the the women amongst them have these long braids uh, and all of them have very bushy eyebrows and many of them are human but their ears are slightly pointed um and me- what you many of them are carrying a quiver of arrows on their back uh and a longbow uh and most of them are wielding either a pair of short swords or scimitars 
Um, and so they're moving about, and there's a there's a group of them that have a scroll. Um, and the scroll, uh, they're holding it up to people in the village. And you, as you pass by, there is a crudely rendered drawing of the three of you <laughs> on the scroll that said wanted for murder. Um, and they're, they, the, the steel fangs are saying, the, you, you overhear them saying, these three, they broke in, they tried to murder the countess, they killed her chamberlain, uh, they, they attacked the burgomaster, they're ruffians and are not to be trusted. If you see them, report them to us immediately. They are very dangerous and they are going to try to kill our beloved countess. They got my hair all wrong. They um, nailed and, my hair. And another group of them are actually taking the, the drawing and they are knocking on the doors of houses and they are barging into the houses and searching in the house. Do we see any signs of... Uh silver order i mean sorry not silver order i apologize uh hooded lanterns do we see any hooded no. lanterns mingling about no okay i whispered to you guys i say we best be on our way and getting this i don't think if it's just the steel fangs anymore they're tearing apart our reputation here yeah, we, we need to get these supplies and get out as fast as possible. That's If we can take the whole cart, awesome. But if not, we're just going to have to gear up. I don't want to have to fight any innocents in this uh, town here. Yeah, I agree. Okay. As you move through town towards the Moose and Squirrel um, Inn, um, you guys can each roll me one more d6. Three. Three. Four. Okay. This is what you see. Okay. So, this is the ground floor uh, of the, the building. So, it is a large two-story um, building. Um, and what you know here is that um, this is the main entrance over here. Um, and over here uh, is where the um, is actually the entrance to the stables. So this whole part of the building on on the on this sort of side is all the the stables area where the rest of it back here from because you've been in here before, you know that this area up here, uh, towards the the top the the north end that is where the kitchens are and then the rest of the building is the tap room with there's a staircase that leads up from the tap room uh to the the inn the to the inn proper um there's no inn and and uh that is the 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 entirety of the building do we know if there's any entrance from the building to the stables other than outside there is a doorway that that connects from the the behind the bar to the stables. I mean, we're invisible right now. I um, I, and I, you I can see that the that in front of the inn, uh, there are there is a steel fang standing with his arms crossed in front of the doors, and two steel fangs posted on either side of the doors to the stable. My friends, I have an idea. What if we create a distraction? What kind of distraction? Well, seeing as we're invisible, um, I know that uh, doing anything too outrageous will ruin the spell. That's how it's worked in the past. But does yelling cause the spell to go down? No. No. Uh, my my in-depth knowledge of magic and this spell in particular, I can tell you that it is good until um, someone strikes me, usually. Um, 
or uh, until you stab someone. All right. Um, I look around. Are there any, like, pedestrians about? Um, there are a handful of pedestrians. There we go. That's too many. <laughs> no, uh, no, they're all mar- they're all marching in a line like that. <laughs> yes. Really disturbing. Um, uh, <laughs> no, there, there, there's a, there's a few. Uh, each of you can roll me a d6. Three, Six. five. Okay, so we'll go with, yeah. Uh, who who rolled the six? I did. Okay, choose which. Uh, so, uh, you you got the six, and so we'll I'll cancel your six out, and we'll go with the sum of the two. So you rolled a three. Uh, Rudy, what did you roll? Three. Three. Wrath. What did you roll? Uh, five. Okay, so there's eight people mingling around. There's a, there's a few. There's a, a young couple comes up and says, "We well, we just want to have drinks." And the uh, the steel tank says, "Bar's closed. Go somewhere else." Um, and so there's a few people that are just lingering about their business. I'll get rid of the rest of them. All right. I think I'm going to make a scene, and that should get the Steel Fang's attention, and then we can slip past them. Can you elaborate on what your scene is? Uh, I'm going to walk into the middle of these pedestrians and yell something. You're all invisible, so, like, are you holding hands? Like, is that the... (laughs) Monty, we're always holding hands when we're invisible. Like, yes. We're probably holding hands when we're visible. Um, and it's a visible comfort to all of it's, us. It's it's the buddy system. We have like a rope, and we're all holding it. You know, actually, like, yeah, I was thinking. That's how I don't do we do picture? Uh, yeah, it's like we're kindergarten <laughs> class crossing a busy street. Always, we we just hold hands. So it wasn't the it wasn't the common folk that were in the line. It was you guys. Yeah, we're yes. in a perfect. Um, um, I'm going to to insult the steel fangs. Ooh, all right. There's, I like there's it. There's our group in a little line. There, right. there we go. I'm awesome. putting you all in a line. Should we, should we, uh, how about this? Do you want to let go of the line, go a bit further? I mean, Wrath can get closer to the door and you make your way over? Uh, sure. I'm going to go stand by the well and yell. I think that's where I should do it so that it sounds like it's coming from the crowd. What if Wilhelm? What yeah, if- this is not a crowd. This is a couple people walking around. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Um, what if what if you say that you've seen um, oh one of us in another area of town? Mm. All, all right, um, I'm gonna do it. So I I like come over here so that I'm like kind of by these two and near maybe maybe over here so that I'm I'm just around, <laughs> and then I'm going to yell. I saw them. I saw them down by the old Burgermaster place. I saw them. I did. And then I'm going to like just skip back. Skip. And then we we catch you like in a Red Rover form. Like we grab both your arms. Like we hold yeah. out our arms to try to catch you, so you know where to stop. Um. Okay. Give me a. Give me a performance check. Ooh. This seems like a good time to use a luck point. That's a little better. Uh, That's going to be... What's my performance? Uh, That's going to be a 15. Um, Okay. The man hears this and rushes over to these two. Who said that? He says... Um, and looks at the, 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 ma- there's a, there's a man and a woman, uh, o- over out in the end. He's like, which of you said that you saw them? And the two are like, twasn't me, sir. I'm just here to go buy some cheese wheels. I, I run to the other group and I go, <laughs> and I go, no, I did see them. They were, they were over by the Burgermaster's house. And then I, I run back again. I the, the, <laughs> the the two people look very confused and as as the uh, as the silver fang rushes up to them and is like are you playing tricks on me 
And they're like, no, I didn't say anything. I'm sorry. We just wanted to come for a drink. Um, I, I want to add to, uh, as as this chaos is happening, um, I want to mimic the speech of the original guard, the one that was in the front, guarding the front. And I want to project my voice towards the other two. And I say, well, what are you waiting for? Go to the Burgermaster. Find those those killers oh you're using the actor feet to do that yeah mm -hmm. okay give me a deception check uh 21 the 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 two men step forward and and they're like what do we what do we do um and and the other uh the other mercenary <laughs> says uh, I can go. we're supposed to stay at our posts I'll go let everyone know inside that someone said saw something and the two guards by the doors they head back oh <laughs> and this this guy he runs into the inn and a short while later um he comes rushing out and followed following with him are six more <laughs> Well, uh, and and they they run out and they and they said and they said and one of them looks at the other and says, "Ruff, are you sure someone's not messing with you? I swear, somebody said that they were down at the Burgermaster's place." Well, look at you and 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 Bruno and Billy. You all stay here. You keep an eye on things. We'll go check out the Burgermaster's place again. If that. It, it, they they saw her there before, so it's a possible that they're, that they're going down. You hold the fort down. Look, look at half of us are going to stay here. Half of us are going to go look. If we're not back, if you if you if, if we see anything going wrong there, we'll let you know right away. I'll we're we're going to go look. I'm going to report right back. We'll only be gone ten minutes. And so he's like, all, all, all right, we'll hold down the fort here. Just make sure make sure that uh, there's no funny business happening. You bet. And so the group of six silver fangs, or six steel fangs, sorry. Wow, I don't know why I keep saying silver, but it's steel. Uh, they uh, they uh, charge off. Bye bye. Uh, leaving behind the the three posted posted guards, uh, just uh, lingering about. Hmm. Uh, we solved a problem we didn't know we had. <clears throat> um uh I'm going to I'm going to make Bruce appear in the bushes. Would that be uh, a uh removal of the invisibility? Nope. No. Um oh. I want to make him appear back in the bushes and sort of like give a little like meow. To sure. uh, just let um, let these two know which which where bushes. he is. Uh, uh, I was gonna say right. Here. Okay, okay. And then um, is the door to the stables uh, closed? It is closed. It's a big set of barn doors. Is there any uh, other windows into the stables, or is it completely sort of closed off beyond the there doors? There are windows. Uh, there, there's kind of like the, the bay windows that like a horse would be able to peek out of, but they're all closed. There are wooden shutters that are closed over them. I want to send Houdini around the building. Um, yeah. Ooh, would going into my familiar's eyes undo invisibility? Uh, I'm gonna say no. It's okay. not attacking or casting a spell. Okay, I just I want to send him around and view through his eyes, so maybe move off to the side into a bush, uh, and see if there's any other windows around the whole building. There are windows all around the building, right? Any open um, ones? Um, in, in fact, um, you can see in as, as you flutter around, you can see that the windows to the stables are closed off. Uh, but the windows into the kitchen and the main room 
uh, are are in fact there's curtains in them, but they're they're filled with pane glass, and, and uh, Houdini can see inside. The tavern is largely empty, um, and looking inside, um, you uh, you can see. Um, that it is largely empty inside, but Boris and Natasha are there inside. The two of them don't look like they are harmed, but they are rather shaken. And the two of them are, are sitting at their table, at one of the tables, and they're speaking to each other. And Boris is shaking his head and he's like, I knew where there would be trouble. I knew where there, there was going to be trouble. When those three showed up, I knew there was going to be trouble. I knew. I knew. I didn't say anything, but I knew. Um. And um. and, Na and Natasha says um, s says back to him, but we cannot say anything. If they knew, they would kill him for sure. And Boris says, I I know, but you do not forget a face like that. You do not. The mustache, the eye patch, I swear it was him. Um, I am going to go up to one of the windows. I'm going to, like, try to go, cl like, clear away from the guards and, like, go to the other side of the building over, over here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to knock on the window. Okay, you rap on the window, and, um, the Boris... What was that? Stay, Natasha, stay. And he steps up and he grabs his crossbow from behind the 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 bar and walks over and like just peers out the window. Does the window like slide up or down or open or anything? Um it does, but there's a latch on the inside. I'm going to knock on the window again. He slides the window open. Without? Who's there? Can I just, like, undo invisibility? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm going to appear, but at the same time, I'm going to cup his mouth while I do it. And All right. Uh, roll a slate of hand check. Eighteen. Okay. He he looks you in in the eyes, um, in the eye, uh, and you could, and and he lowers the crossbow, and gestures you in. I climb in through the window. He closes it quickly. You must hide. They will be back so quickly. I need into the stables. There are three in there. With the others, the lanterns, they've got them tied up. They murdered two of them already. Damn. Well, don't know how I'm going to re relay that message. Uh, Houdini is still at one of the windows, though, so I'm hoping Houdini may be <laughs> witness okay. this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because Rudy's still looking through Houdini's senses. So oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna glance back at Houdini and be like, uh, like, you know, listen. Okay. Uh, that means yes. I don't know. I just figured that I would uh, get on the inside. We needed a man on the inside, and so now okay. I am that man. Uh, but I don't know what you guys want to do with that. I thought okay. I could sneak into the stables, but that seems difficult now. I need to think for a second. Rudy, what are you going to do? I'm going to listen as the owl. Okay. Well, I, I meant more just to make sure you heard that. Oh, yeah. sorry. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, for now, I'm going to stay where I am because I don't okay. know where Wrath is. Wrath, what do you want to do? Uh, I want to send Bruce around in front of the doorway 
And can I can I get Bruce behind the guards? Can he just sort of be? I want him the, to be a nonchalant cat. Yeah, yeah. Where does Bruce want to go? He's where gonna go? walk across this, and I'm trying to be a very obvious play for uh, Rudy. Um, and he's gonna go on the side, and I'm gonna follow. Um, okay. So I'm gonna sneak around the side here, and I want to see if I can open up one of these side windows. Um, sure. As you go to open them, they're latched shut from the inside, so you would need to force it open. Um, it's not good. What what way did the the six of them run off? Uh, they went off in uh, in this direction. Okay, towards the burgermaster's uh, the burgermaster's uh, manor. It, it's a, it's about a five minute walk there, so round trip you've got maybe if if they're gonna come back you've got ten minutes fifteen tops before they come back. Okay. Um, I <laughs> I have I have an idea. Um, I hope you guys just. Do what you got to do. Um, where is the entrance into the stables from inside the tavern? Uh, the entrance in, into the stables, there is a doorway here that leads in. All right. Um, Sorry, it's a little unclear from this part of the map, but there's kind of like a, a thing there. I'm going to open the window again that uh, Boris was at, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to come over, and I'm going to kick in the door loudly okay you kick in the door loudly uh, reveal not conceal reveal reveal um revealing a room where there are uh, in the stables, you've seen this, these stables before. You actually, I think, been in, been in these. There are three horses that are tied up in this in the stables, along with four tied up hood, hooded lanterns and the brutalized corpses of two other hooded lanterns. Oh, there are um, two of the um, uh, the other uh, other men, the steel fangs, are have grabbed another one of the hooded lanterns. And they are, one of them is saying, your other two friends didn't talk. Your other two friends didn't tell us where Drexel and the others are. But you're going to tell us, right? Because you want to live, don't you? And, and, um, and as you do, do you want to see what we're going to do to you? And the three men, just as you're kicking the door open, they're finishing that sentence. Um, as you see a flash of like almost their faces distort for a moment it like their nose turns almost into a wolf like snout for a brief moment and as you kick the door open they turn and they see you they make di direct eye contact eye to eyes um and the one man drops the the hooded lantern and they growl roll for initiative We needed them out of there. I hope you guys get where I'm going with this. Oh, cool. I'm I, yeah. You're. I, I love the action. Uh. Okay, Rudy. What's your initiative? Seventeen. Seventeen. Wilhelm. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Um, I'm also Raph? 17. Uh, Rudy, would you like to go first? I can go first. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. So, um, there is a moment, uh, that shudders as the three steel fangs, uh, in the room see you, Wilhelm, um, and one of them says, that's him. Kill him. And they, the three of them in the, in the, in the room, they keel over 
and um, fall to the floor on their hands and knees, and they begin to shudder and convulse. What do you do? Uh, so I, I give them the salute, and I go, Morning, boys. Uh, didn't expect to find you here. I'm going to have to go back and tell Elias about this. Um, and then I'm going to turn, mm -hmm. and I'm going to bonus action dash and dive out the window. Hopefully with them pursuing. That's that's the goal. Okay. So I think I can get to there. Yeah. Uh, uh, where where are you? I, I went back <laughs> out the <laughs> yeah, window. Where did you go? <laughs> you disappeared. <laughs> I, I went back out the window that I, I originally came in because I opened it before doing this. So I went, kicked down the door, called them out, threw Elias's name in there just in case they needed more reason to follow me, and then ran and dove out the window. Okay. Rudy, what are you going to do? Um... Good question. I'm still invisible, right? Mm -hmm. I am going to um, dash over towards the window. Okay. Yeah. Can I get? I can get about there. Sneaky, sneaky. Keeping an eye out uh, for more steel fangs to come. Okay. And Wrath, what are you going to do? Um, I'm going to... Can I, can I get this window open enough for Bruce to get in? Uh, you can make a strength check and try. Like, just to, just to squeeze him... Uh... Uh, I get a 14. Uh, yeah, you uh, open it up and Bruce can get through. And uh, and, and Bruce is going to jump in and um, and he's going to run over to the uh, the hooded lanterns. All right. Anything else that you'd like to do, Bruce? Or Bruce? It's appropriate. It's appropriate. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Uh, no, no, Bruce is fine. Okay. Um, well, with that, the Steel Fangs. The six Steel Fangs, upon hearing the cry out from the, the room, drop to the ground. Um, and then, as they drop to the ground, they convulse, their bodies convulse, and their forms distort hair grows out their bodies um their and their ch heads transform into a lupine shape on all four now on all fours they spur into action the two that were um previously uh beating up the hooded lantern uh in in the room they drop to all fours and with feral speed Oh. burst across <laughs> uh, bur burst across the uh, the room I have shut the window behind me um, it... <laughs> one one burst out but the other two they just go right through the front the 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 front door of Good. the um, uh, of the there they just run right out like that so that means uh, that door is open now yeah nice. and they begin running towards the direction that wilhelm was all of them like a pack of wolves beginning to chase down their prey cool love it that's what i wanted uh and uh, the common folk begin screaming in terror <laughs> because a bunch of werewolves just appeared in the middle of the town street how are they going to get their wheels of cheese now? <laughs> They're not. <laughs> with that, we go to the top with Wilhelm. Uh, Wilhelm, am I currently like not in line of sight to any of them? Uh, I'm going to say that this guy here uh, can see you. 
Okay. Um, through through the window, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna move slightly to the side, and I'm gonna bonus action dash, and I actually want to kind of parkour up the side of the building onto the roof. Okay. You wanna you wanna head up onto the roof? Yeah. Sounds sounds good to me. Uh, give me a um athletics check. Athletics. Are you sure I can't acrobatics it? Yes. Well, that changes things because then I don't want to do that. Um. Yeah, because I'm not athletic at all. Um, yeah, cause it, it, just in this situation, there's not really anything for you to like parkour up. It would be more like doing a muscle up. All right. Like, well, yeah, I'm you're, not. You're I'm not muscle in this case. Uh, well, then I'm just gonna bonus action dash, and we're gonna kind of go. Um. If I bonus action dash, can I action dash as well? Uh, yes, you can. Cool. I'm going to go like into the trees. Since I've broken line of sight with all of them, am I able... No, I've already used my bonus action and my action. Never mind. I can't hide. Uh, so yeah, I just run around the outside of the house. Okay. Uh, Rudy, what are you going to do? I'm doing laps. Yep. Um, I am going to do, 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 do. where's my there it is. Um, oh, hold on. Oh, there we go. I want to move. Where do I want to move? You know what? I'm gonna go around the well here and i think i am going to dash again and so i'm going to get about here. sorry i'm moving my thing about here okay and i want to now that the door is open i would like to missy step into the barn okay you missy step into the barn Ooh. okay uh thus becoming visible in the process Boom. Okay, and then that will take me... Yeah, about there. Yep. And I say to the Hooded Lanterns, I'm like, We're here to help you out! And like, okay. whisper scream! Alrighty. Whisper scream! Uh, sure, sure. Uh, you are very visible now, um, so we'll uh, we'll just see whether the werewolves catch, catch sight of you, because you're in dead sight of them. Wrath, what are you going to do? Uh, I'm gonna dash into the room. I run past Rudy. <laughs> okay. Just, oh, there's a Rudy. And uh, I'm gonna have Bruce. Can Bruce start to chew on the ropes of the? Uh... Yeah, but he's a cat still, so like he's not very good at it. Ooh. It's gonna take him a while. Okay. What if I did? Um. <laughs> he's he's not um you're right um yeah he's gonna start chewing to show uh good faith okay and uh i'm still invisible and i'm running in because uh my intention is to uh i'm just gonna try to release those guys okay and i'm gonna say in rudy's mind i'm here with you all right, Rudy, roll me a d6 to see if you have been lucky enough to not attract the attention uh, of the uh, of the werewolves. Three? Okay, not what I'm looking for. No! Um, as the, the werewolves turn around, they just catch a... You hear them sm sniffing in the air and as you rush by them, and it doesn't take them long to turn around and see... You... We'll get this one. You go after the the man. And and so three of the um of the steel fangs they charge towards you, Rudy. Ooh. And the other two continue to pursue Wilhelm. Um they kind of yell at each other, he's gone to the other side. And and so this one rushes out and crashes out the window. The, this one runs around the side there, and this one's going to run in to the building. Yeah, so these guys, uh, this guy's not quite going to have enough movement to get into attack, but the other two 
are. So Rudy, the the two werewolves um, burst into the room, be into the stables before you. Their fangs bared, um, and they um, they launch into their attacks. Um, okay. Okay. So they both make uh, claw attacks uh, and bite attacks. Uh, so I get a total of 20. The first one gets 21 with its bite and 19 with its claw. Shield! Okay. The second one will attack. Uh, getting a critical hit with its bite. <laughs> uh, and a very bad miss with the claws. Uh, the bite is going to be a total of 13 points of piercing damage and make a constitution saving throw. Oh, boy. 15. Okay. Uh, you do not contract lyca- uh, lycanthropy. Oh. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, but you still take a crit. Uh, great. Uh, so we go back to the top of the round with Wilhelm. Wilhelm is just in full on sprint mode. Um, <laughs> he is like dodging trees. Uh, and yeah, he's going to keep running. He's hoping that his two comrades are going to be ready with the cart by the time he makes it around the building uh, so that he can hop on with a glorious escape. Uh, but that's probably not going to happen. But he's running and he's being like, he's just sprinting top speed, turning around, looking over his shoulder, hungry wolves after him. And he's like, oh, they better get that cart soon. Okay. So you just sprint around the building. Absolutely. I'm, okay. I'm just trying to... <laughs> Get them away from the cart, not realizing that three have turned around to fight Rudy. Okay. Uh, Rudy, it is your turn. Okay. Um, you know what? I am going to take some swipes at these scary werewolves. Yeah. And Houdini's on the other side of the thing. Good job, Houdini. <laughs> Um, okay, let's go for it. Uh, 18 to hit, uh, this one right beside me, or... That is a hit, yeah. Nice. Uh, 11 damage. Okay. Again! 16 to hit. It is a hit. For 10 damage. And then one more. Oh, no. Um, 11 to hit. Not a hit, I'm afraid. Wah, wah. As your axes cleave into the, the wolf's flesh, um, the there is a look of surprise on the wolf's face as the wounds appear on its body, but it grits its teeth and growls. Come at me. And I growl back and I say, you're going to wish you didn't say that, boy. Alrighty. Uh, Wrath, it is your turn. Okay, is it a um, is it an interaction to try to? Uh, I want to try to untie some of the hooded lanterns. Uh, untying the hooded lanterns will be an action. Okay, um, knowing this, I'm going to turn to these three werewolves, and I want to cast Hold Person as a fourth level spell. Okay, so that would affect all of them, and werewolves are in fact uh, humanoids. DC so, 16. DC 16. Come on. Um, come on, come on. I'm really sorry. Oh, oh no. no! I'm really, really sorry, but two of them succeed their saves. Only one fails. Wisdom oh. saves? Yeah. Son of I a roll- junk. No, yeah. that there was a mistake. You just need to re-roll mods, and it's fine. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. I, I, I'm sorry. So, so one is paralyzed. Um, I'll, um, I'll one, two, three, four, five, six to determine. Uh, it's the middle one that's paralyzed. I, 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 I come out of invisibility, and I go stop werewolves, and two of them look at me. 
and I, uh, and, I keep, and I run over it, and I start to try to scramble with the knots. <laughs> this damn magic. <laughs> okay. Anything else you'd like to do, Wrath? Um, I'm going to send Bruce over to um, help uh, Rudy. Okay. Uh, the the wolves. Um, these guys are going to have to really motor. Uh, 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 that's too far. Go there. Okay. Uh, you are going to try to go through the building. Get to there and you are confused by your friend running through the building and they're and they see this and now they're very confused <laughs> uh but they th these three are all dashing um and these three are uh one's uh gonna be paralyzed uh so the one will attack you rudy makes two attacks uh, wow, that turned around. Getting a 19 with the claws and a natural 1 with the bite. I'll take a hit. Okay, the uh, claws are going to be 8 points of slashing damage. The other is going to go after Taste of Little Wrath. Ah! <laughs> I'm just uh, dying. Things. Getting a natural 1 with the claws, but a 22 with the bite. Uh-oh, it uh -oh. bit me. Uh, the Ow, bite he bites my leg. <laughs> seven points of uh, piercing damage. Give me a Constitution saving throw. Uh, I get an eight. All right, that's going to be interesting. We'll see what <laughs> happens with that. <laughs> so, so does something happen? Uh, not yet. <laughs> Why does that oh, cool, feel cool. worse? Oh, yeah, why? I wish you just said something. <laughs> so it bites my leg. I'm like, ah, oh, I feel this. I feel weird. Ah, oh, guys, I feel weird. <laughs> uh, but I'm All still right. frantically. I'm focused. I'm going to uh, give me a, a concentration check. Oh, for yeah. Your... <laughs> um, I get a nine. Okay, and your concentration is broken. Uh, it's all on the same turn, so I'm not going to give that guy a turn. He still was, lost his turn, but it's over now. The whole person is over. <laughs> it wasn't very impactful to begin with. <laughs> he was more no. confused that I came out of uh, invisibility and yelled something at him. Yeah, yeah, it was confusing for all around. Top of the round with Wilhelm. Wilhelm is uh, still running. Mm -hmm. uh, There's a werewolf behind you. Yeah. It's chasing so you. He's running, and as he turns around, he notices there's only one wolf. And he looks through the windows of the stable, and he sees wolves attacking Wrath and Rudy. And I'm just like, I cleared out the whole stables, and you called them all back? Um, and We didn't I'm call them! <laughs> Get, get the cart! It's, it's on my leg! It's get the cart! Um, and, yeah, I'm going to, I guess, just uh, keep keep going. Okay. Uh, there's where I end up. All right, Rudy, it's your turn. And I'm yelling at them to get the cart. All I'm hearing is, get the cart! And I say, all right, I'll get the cart. And I'm going to... Um, disengage. Okay. And move towards the cart. And I am going to uh, use my action surge to cast enlarge reduce on myself. <laughs> <laughs> and I grab the cart and I say, Wrath, get on! <laughs> Same with you, Hooded Lanterns! And I start to, like, get it ready to, like, ram out the door. <laughs> okay. Uh, the Lanterns are very tied up. Um, but, uh, Wrath, it's your turn. Um, you have a werewolf biting your leg. It's bleeding profusely. Uh, and it feels uh, really weird. Like, there's a weird tingly feeling that's uh, that's uh, going through you. Why don't, it's not supposed to feel like this. Um, 
I mean, I, uh... See ya, and uh, I'm gonna disengage and run for the cart. Okay. <laughs> you disengage and run for the cart. <laughs> <laughs> Jump into the cart. That's Big Rudy. <laughs> I, I, I can't untie four people. <laughs> I had a werewolf fighting me. All right. The werewolves, they go, get her. Don't let her escape. Uh, and Rudy gets surrounded by five werewolves. This plan went well. I, I I had it all planned out, and it went exactly how I wanted it. Yeah, to. I know, I know. Yes. Yeah, so five werewolves. You're big, Rudy. You're big, Rudy. You're big, Rudy. You're big, Rudy. Channel big, Rudy. So the first werewolf uh, gets uh, a fifteen and an eight with the bite, and then a fourteen with the bite. And a 20 with the claw. Shield. Okay. Uh, the next two, uh, I get a 20 with the bite and a 19 with the bite. And then the claws, I get a uh, 18 and a 14. Nope. What do I need to hit your AC with shield? With shield, uh, 23. Okay. Great. Okay, so shield saves the day. <laughs> <laughs> the highest was a 22. Uh, Eldritch Knights, everybody. Eldritch Knights. What are you going to do next? Arcane lock my front door? <laughs> Maybe I will. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, my very ineffectual werewolves swarm Rudy and cannot penetrate her magical defenses. Uh, okay, with that, um, we go to Wilhelm. Wilhelm runs into the barn. Uh, I'm going to, again, bonus action dash. I'm going to, uh, are these, these are low, like, fent indoor little kind of separators, yeah, right? Yeah, they're, sta they're stalls. Parkour. Yeah. Um, I parkour <laughs> over and I start, un I'm going to bonus action dash, parkour over, and I'm going to immediately start untying the hooded lanterns. Okay, give me a slate of hand check. Uh, that was a 20 on the die, so that's a 25. Uh, you are so quick with untying, you managed to untie two. Nice. Mm. Okay. Nice. Nice, Wilhelm. Rudy, it's your turn. Um... Is there any way for me to drive around these guys? Or do I have to drive through them? Uh, you can't go around it. Gotta go through it. <laughs> All right, I just, I disengage and I start to drive through the werewolves. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you're gonna trample over them. Uh, so, and you wanna do so defensively. Um, so Essentially guess, a big ramming. <laughs> yeah, big yeah. Rudy. Um, Okay, I'm going to have you make opposed strength checks against the first two at the front. Okay. Fail me. Oh, you're, you're, uh, you, might, you might do oh, this. Oh, I get advantage, because I'm big. Yeah. Yes. Okay, the first one is 25. Okay. Uh, the second? 24. Okay, you smash through the werewolves, pulling the cart behind you. <laughs> Move out of the yes. way, werewolves! Oh, big Rudy! <laughs> oh, man. It's always good. It's always good. Uh, yeah, so they they have to just move. I'm just going to rule that they have to move aside uh, to make way for you. So yeah, and you pull the cart and bowl them over, and I'm gonna say the two of them are knocked prone uh, by that. <laughs> okay, um, Wrath. Uh, I poke out the back, and using my spell storing ring, I cast Hypnotic Pattern on the five werewolves. Oh. <laughs> I burst and I go, Ta -da! <laughs> Okay, let's see if he get a little bit better. Come on, come on, come That's on. That's a fail. That's a fail. That's a fail. Yes. That's a fail. Yes. That's a fail. Yeah! That's what we wanted. Woo! This, 
the strike in five pin bowling. That's what we oh. wanted. <laughs> 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 okay, so with that, can we grab the rest of the Hooded Lanterns, hop onto the cart, and, and ride off into the sunset? Uh, the Hooded Lanterns point to the horses, and they they oh, yeah. they take the horses and they ride off. Okay, and I, I run and jump onto the cart. The Hooded Lanterns yeah. jump onto the horses, and together, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> there's one unhypnotized werewolf right here. Oh, who chases like a dog after yeah, the? Yeah, just just like a dog chasing a car down the street, <laughs> <laughs> with Big Rudy pulling it. Oh man, yeah, this is great. You know what? This plan did go perfectly. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, in the car. <laughs> you know, we don't need a plan when we have Big Rudy. I think Big Rudy just. Big Rudy steamrolls over any <laughs> obstacle in our way. Oh, we're trapped in a dungeon? Yeah, let's get Big Rudy on it. <laughs> get the card! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, with those shenanigans, as our heroes ride off into the, the afternoon sun, I think that that is an appropriate thing to place to leave things off uh, for, for this time. Get the card! <laughs> Really got the cart. Oh man. <laughs> yep. And we didn't kill any of them. You we didn't. did it. You didn't. <laughs> well cool. done. Oh, well done. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's just a great. Why does my leg hurt? My leg hurts. Oh, it's so weird. Oh, you're oh, gonna want to get that no. looked at. No, um, it's just a. I mean, I, I I've gotten bit before. It's fine. Yeah, yeah but it, it looks funny. it looks infected. It looks gnarly. Does it look bad? Yeah, yeah. It's Raph, not as, good. as we're right as Rudy's like hauling us off and we're riding, I look at your wound and I'm like, I'm trying to play it off too. Uh, I'm like trying to stand on it. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Raph, were you bitten by a werewolf? No. Oh, good because I've heard terrible stories about what happens if you're bitten by a werewolf. It's uh. Pretty horrific, and um, I wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemy. So I'm glad you weren't. How'd you cut your leg? Um, no, this the creatures attacked me, but I um, uh, this I was this... able to escape into the into the uh, the carriage, the wagon pulled by Big Rudy, and um, Raph, and I'm I'm like lifting up your robes a little. These these are clearly bite marks. <laughs> Look, it, uh, Wilhelmin is nothing to concern you with. I've been mauled and attacked by dozens of creatures. Uh, uh, it, it's... We'll need to talk to somebody knowledgeable in magic in order to heal you. I consult curse. myself, and I am, I am self-diagnosing myself as fine. I am fine. Rudy, we're going to need help for Raph. He needs medical attention. All right. I do want to lay down, though. I, uh... I am quite tired. <laughs> keep concentrating on that spell, Raph. Just keep concentrating. Our... <laughs> anyway. And that, as, as we, we fade out on our heroes for now, uh, a big thank you, as always, to our players, Kelly, Jill, and Joe, for playing. And a huge thank you to Kyle for everything he does behind the scenes. And I'm really excited to get back into a room with Kyle so that we get his thumb again. Yeah. And I can see him look at us with uh, that look of like, what the heck are you guys doing? Which he gives us often during gameplay. <laughs> and I miss that. And I'm very excited. So <laughs> thank you, Kyle, for everything you do. And thank you, Monty, for being an Amazing. awesome dungeon master. Um, and... Honestly, this felt like a much more uh, lighthearted note to end on uh, as opposed to the uh, the really emotional ending we had last week. And I like that. I like this this uh, kind of werewolf romp that we got to go on. And it was it was tons of fun. So thank you for running an excellent game. Thank you. And uh, as always. Um, so, Joe, we got some thank yous for, from you as well. 
Yeah, um, I, I wanted to give a big shout out to everyone that uh, provides the incredible assets uh, and they are produced by some talented artists and we use them in our games and we hope you can use them too. They have graciously given us permission to use them in our games. So you should go out and support and check out these amazing creators. We use the Virtual Tabletop by uh, Roll20, the custom maps made by Monty using Dungeon Draft and Wonder Draft based on the cartography by uh, Dyson Logos, player character artwork by Jeremy Cole, NPC Token Network by Matthias Bourbon, Monster Token Network from the D&D 5e Monster Manual, and other source books. We've got Spell Effects Tokens by Gabriel Picard and music by Tabletop Audio. Uh, so thank you all. Of course, don't yeah. forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store, where you can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes t-shirts, including Dusk Wardens, Yes, 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 and way bigger than ducks. Check out bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. I want to give one more big thank you to all those creators whose assets uh, that we were using in our games uh, for the past year and a bit. Uh, it was quite an adjustment working with uh, virtual tabletops uh, after really a group where we played in person. Like we, we'd never really done the online play before as a, as a group. So it was a big change for us. And uh, these assets have been amazing. And I think that a lot of our, a lot of folks, uh, for those of you that have been following us for this while, as we go over the next few weeks, we would love to hear from you what you enjoyed about our virtual play and how that worked, what worked well. And uh, we do encourage you as well to look at season one and uh, and we would love to hear your ideas and thoughts about how, as we come back in person again, how we can make it even better. Uh, as I said, we have a plan in place right now where we are uh, looking at, we are upgrading some of our equipment, we are upgrading our audio setup. Uh, we've been able to, because of the generosity of our patrons and our amazing backers for our Kickstarter, we look at our budget and are like, yeah, we can we can spare some uh, spare something in the budget to do some upgrades around here. Uh, so we are going to be back in the game room in 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 the in the basement in oh, in all its glory uh we got lots of cool terrain and cool miniatures to start using i'm gonna have to uh make sure that i got enough werewolves uh <laughs> wait what <laughs> no i think i do i think i have at least 12 werewolf miniatures this, this is the one hard part is although we have such a nice collection of dwarven forge and minis and all that uh the the virtual tabletop allows you to be like yeah. here's 40 werewolves endless you know? Endless, endless possibilities mm -hmm. yeah 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 it's been so, quite an experience what we are looking at though is we are looking at having some new battle cams we're going to have uh two cameras for our battle cam now so that we can show our dwarven forge setups and our terrain setups and our miniatures and stuff like that uh we're going to be experimenting as we come back and figuring out which is the best uh camera angles to set things up but we might also have them movable so we'll see you uh we'll we'll see how that all works out so please let us know what you liked about the uh the virtual tabletop play uh we certainly might use this uh, hopefully, if we have to play virtually again in the future, it is because we would like to play with a guest on the other side of the world and not because we can't play together in person. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> knock on wood uh, for that. Um, but uh, but this is but we're going to keep the playbook here and uh, keep all that in store. So a big thank you, especially uh, like I had a lot of fun making maps with tabletop uh, with with uh, two minute tabletop and uh, the uh, neutral party maps and uh, dungeon draft. Uh, those were really awesome tools. And so uh, really, really awesome assets to be able to use um, in the game. So uh, with that, um, uh, I do want to say, because of that, um, our videos and live streams are made possible thanks to the generosity of our Patreon supporters. Uh, our Patreon supporters allowed us, uh, when we moved to remote play, to get uh, equipment for Joe and Jill and to uh, get equipment for Kelly especially, because Kel Joe and Jill actually had stuff. Kelly didn't. <laughs> um, so we we, uh, we were able to do all that thanks to our patrons. Uh, and it's because of our patrons that we're able to do things like get upgrades uh, to to our, our cinematic set setup. If you enjoy the work that we do on YouTube and on Twitch, please consider becoming a patron of our work. It's the best way to support what we do. Um, and uh, that is at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes or by following the links in the description below. We also have a uh, an incredible Discord community that's exclusive for our Patreons or our patrons. Um, so if you join our Patreon, you can join us on Discord. It is one of the best communities I've ever been a part of. Um, I just find that there's so many awesome people there who uh, really kind of dig into just 
everything D and D with us. They enjoy the banter. We talk about different uh, classes, subclasses, uh, character design. Uh, also, we dig into kind of the behind the scenes stuff on uh, Drakenheim. We talk about you know how we're feeling after the episodes, what's going on. We answer questions in there. You can actually talk to Monty in a behind the scenes chat. Uh, that the three of us are not allowed in. So uh, that's that's really fun. Um, and yeah, you can just kind of come and hang out and join the amazing community there. There's a lot of hype right now for our Kickstarter in the Discord, and that's been really exciting. I get to go in there every day and just see a bunch of people shooting numbers out and being like, here's how much we have to make every day if we want to hit a million. Here's how much, like, I don't know. It's just, it's so, so much hype and so much enthusiasm and I absolutely love the community that we've built there. And so please join us on Discord if you're joining our Patreon and just join in all the fun that we're having. In in related news, um, so our for our streaming schedule, um, we will be having some live stream events next week. Next Tuesday, uh, Kelly and I will be here doing our week our monthly Patreon Q and A. Normally, we do this on the last Thursday of the month, but we have moved it to the Tuesday this week because we're not doing Drakenheim, and it uh, it just works out better on our scheduling. So we will be streaming next Tuesday. It'll just be Kelly and I um, uh, doing our Patreon uh, Q and A questions that we do every month, and then all of us will be back on Friday next week um from six to eight uh for the last kind of live stream party as we close out our kickstarter which is now live so if you enjoy our work and really want to get uh, a real taste of what's what's next to come uh check out our kickstarter at drakenheim.com uh you can get in um you, you get the pdf for 25 bucks and this is going to be a beefy pdf like this is a big book we hit a lot of stretch goals we added a lot of adventures to this like you Ooh. know you got you got i would say in this in this book you know you got you got what maybe one two years worth of D D out of this book kelly what do you think i mean i'm probably going to be running it for like four years knowing my group but um... yeah. like, like i think like each adventure site you know you're going to get it like most of them you're going to get two or three game sessions out of i would say yeah two we, to four we, some of them are some of them yeah. are probably like four to six um uh, but so, most know, if, of them are yeah yeah if you play every week you might get through them all in a year yeah but that it's doesn't a, even a, take into account the downtime and how much contamination people are going to get and then they have to retreat and then they have to uh befriend oh, oh, the yeah. horrible monsters and try to make their own allegiances and make horrible mistakes and plan and, your next steps like what about your like how I, you know you can't just make decisions oh, you gotta show like, Joe, planning takes no time at all we've proven that on our show take in large <laughs> take in large get an elder tonight you're fine yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, so the, it's it, uh, Dungeons of Drakenheim is now live on Kickstarter. It's based on season one Ooh. of our live stream campaign, where uh, you can step into the shoes of the heroes of Drakenheim with your own characters, uh, decide the fate of Drakenheim for yourself. Maybe Elias Drexel never gets to this point because uh, maybe he gets geeked by your party, <laughs> who works for the Queen of Thieves. Um, you know, maybe uh, maybe one of your characters is the long lost heir uh, of the Von Kessel family. Uh, we've really Really made this campaign very open-ended so that you're if you love all the creativity and all the connections that we have in our show we really baked this into this book with our personal quest system and we really want to have that uh, campaign where your characters feel like they are the heart of the story so if you if you really are inspired by the work that, that we do here on our on our live streams check out our book and um, uh Join yeah. us, uh, not next week, join us live on, uh, right now, we are slotting in the 17th of August, I believe, as our comeback date. Um, if we have any news of that being different, we will be posting about it on Twitter and in our YouTube community and on Facebook and also in our Discord. So tentatively right now, the 17th is when we will be returning to the Shadows of Drakenheim. We're taking a few weeks off so that not only we can take a little bit of a summer break and enjoy the last legs of this Kickstarter, but also so that we can start getting our gear and preparations in place to return to the basement, to, to playing in person. So all of that to come. Uh, thank you for your time that you have spent with us, and we hope to see you all back in the shadows of Drakenheim 
on the 17th of August. Yeah, and of course, in the meantime, our videos on YouTube always continue. We're going to have more videos uh, unabated. Kelly and I have banked up a couple uh, uh, to go up, so you're not going to miss any of our YouTube content. It's going to go up every Tuesday, every every other Tuesday, and every Thursday, uh, even during our, our our streaming break. So catch that all up on youtube.com slash Dungeon Dudes. Yeah, and with that, thank you all so much. I am so I feel so privileged and grateful to be able to live stream for such an amazing and wonderful community as all of you out there. So thank you for joining us in the shadows. See you in a few weeks.